Hey, this is Joe Intel, and today we're gonna do a subwoofer shootout. So first we're gonna start off with doing some frequency sweep test to see where your speakers can play. So your speakers, your headphones, have to be able to play some pretty low bass to be able to hear some of the bass that we're gonna be playing today. So I'm gonna test a bunch of the subs that I have lying around. I have some budget subs, I have some higher end subs like the SVS one, I have some old school ones, I have a DIY one, I have another DIY small version, and so there's a bunch of different ones that I want to take a look at and see what the differences are. We're going to take a look at the specs, the features, and I'm going to do some measurements of each sub. And we're going to try to find out which one is right for you and which one is right for certain situations. And at the very end, I'm going to have to put this on our speaker leaderboard to see where they place. So the first thing is, what's the reason for this comparison? And I think it's just because a lot of people ask which sub they should get, whether they should get a budget sub, whether they should spend more on a higher end sub and uh, try to figure out what is right for each person. So the first thing when you're considering a sub is to try to figure out what your room size is, what the purpose, what you're gonna be playing from it, and also what is the cutoff for your speakers. So can your speakers play down to 40 hertz, 30 hertz, 80 hertz? So that's gonna be important. We're gonna try to figure out which sub is good for you based on those things. One thing to note is that each octave, meaning the lower the sub goes, the more it's gonna cost you. So that's just kind of one of the trade-offs. And the other thing is, the lower the sub goes, typically it's a larger sub as well. So just know that being able to hit 50 hertz, you don't have to spend too much. You wanna hit down to 30, 20, you're gonna to start to spend more and more and more. So if this sub is gonna be in your main listening room and it's gonna be for your main system, my opinion is the sub only has one job and that job is to play bass notes. So let's say for example, if your speakers can go down to 40 hertz, to get a sub that's gonna go only down to 30 hertz doesn't really make sense to me. Human hearing is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, so for me, I want it to get all the way down to 20 hertz. So if you're not considering a sub, you may wanna consider it, just because most speakers don't play full range. So unless you have some huge towers, they're not gonna play down to 20 hertz by themselves. Even if you're not somebody who's super into bass heavy music or watching movies, the thing is if you have an AVR, audio video receiver, that can use a subwoofer, typically what it also does is it allows you to have a high pass crossover, letting your other speakers play louder. And the reason that is, is because with a high pass crossover, the sub is gonna take care of the bass region and your other speakers don't have to play those bass notes, which means that they can kind of take it easy and you can play them louder. First thing we need to do is test your existing system. Let's try to find out how low your speakers can play right now. And if you're wearing headphones, we're gonna to try to see how low your headphones can play. And this is important because a lot of people say, well, I'm doing these sound demos and I'm listening on my phone. Am I gonna be able to hear it? No, you're not gonna be able to tell because your phone can't produce bass notes. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna play these test tones and just make sure your speakers are turned down for right now. I don't wanna blow up your speakers because I'm gonna play some really low test tones starting at 10 hertz all the way to 250 hertz. What I want you to pay attention to is try to see where you're able to start hearing the bass at what frequency and then try to figure out when you stop hearing the bass. So it's gonna play from low to high and then from high to low. The other thing I want you to know is that there's such thing as uh, minus three decibels, minus six decibel, and minus 10 decibels. So just because you can hear the bass a little bit doesn't mean that your speakers can actually produce that bass because it's so low relative to all the other frequencies they can play that it's pretty much non-existent. So try to figure out the point where the low end starts to sound about equal to, let's say the 150 hertz range. So whenever those are about equal in loudness, that's when your speaker starts to fall off or roll off. So I have a bunch of subs right now. I have one that's a huge sub and it was given to me so I don't know the name off the top of my head but I'll show it here. I have the Mica MS-12, a 12 inch subwoofer. 
I have the Mica MS10, which is a 10 inch version. I have the SVS SB2000. And then I have a DIY one that I call the Nice Cube, the Elac Sub 3010, a DIY sub called the Voxel, and that's pretty much it. All right, so the first one is this Angstrom Forza. And right now, this is kind of just being used as furniture. And it's one that was given to me, so price-wise, for me, it was free. I don't know what it was originally. I see it being sold here for $450 Canadian. I don't think it's really worth that. The specs say that it's 150 watts. It's a 10-inch woofer and extends down to 28 hertz. I don't really think that's true. It has low and high level inputs. It has a gain, crossover frequency, and a phase control dial. On the bottom, you'll see that it's ported, and that's pretty much it, and it's huge. First, I did a sweep test of the Angstrom Forza. The sweep test goes from zero hertz to 150 hertz. And let's take a look at the graph here. So as you can see, this is not a very flat response even from 150 hertz down, it's kind of like a big mountain that you see here. And it peaks at 100 hertz. And this might be because there was some kind of bass boost. I saw that there was a dial back there. I haven't used this sub in a while, so I haven't really played with it too much. Or 85 decibel at 40 hertz. And then you'll get uh, minus three decibels. So I gotta go to 82 over here. Uh, at 36 hertz. If you look at the minus six dB, that's the F6 and that is at 33.6 hertz. Now, if you wanna be very extreme, you can do the F10 at minus 10 decibels, and that would be at 30 hertz. So they claim 28 hertz, maybe at F10, but definitely not the standard, which is at F3, it's definitely not at 28 hertz. So the other thing I want you to take a look at is just how how not flat this is. So this is gonna be hard to cross over unless you're crossing over right here at uh, at around 100 hertz. Maybe, you know, the typical is 80 hertz. You can cross over here, but it starts to drop off drastically after that. So you're gonna to have to use a lot of DSP for this sub. All right, so next up is the Mica MS-12. And so this is pretty inexpensive. Let's see what this sells for right now. So right now, this Mica MS-12, it's a 12 inch sub sells for 179 on Amazon. So this is a 12 inch driver and it has a port on the bottom. So on the back it has an 80 watt RMS plate amp with a 120 watt max. You have high and low level inputs. You have a phase switch from zero to 180. I prefer to have a dial because 180 just means, you know, either out of phase or in phase. If you have a dial, you can kind of adjust it from zero to 180, so that's nice. It helps you blend the sub a little bit better. It has a low pass crossover and then a gain control. And it has the auto on and off. Okay. Micah claims a frequency response from 29 hertz to 150 hertz. So here you can see it next to the Angstrom Forza. All of these have been set to a reference level of 85 hertz using pink noise. And as you can see here, this also is not very flat. And so it has a peak around 65 hertz and at 85 decibels it's at 39 hertz at f3 it's at 35 hertz it has a f6 of 32 hertz and an f10 of about 29 hertz so let's take a look at the ms10 so this is another sub from mica and this is a 10 inch version pretty much everything else is exactly the same except for the size of the woofer and the size of the enclosure so this one sells for 149 on amazon so this is a budget sub, obviously. Now, Micah claims an in-room response of 36 hertz to 150 hertz. Let's see how it actually measures. All right, so here it is. The MS-12 is here, and this is the MS-10. As you can tell, they look very similar. Uh, the MS-12 seems to have a little bit more bass extension, just a little bit of a boost here around 60, 50, 40, from 40 to 60 hertz. All right, let's have the MS-12 go away so we can take a look at this. So at 85, the MS-10 is at 39 hertz and the standard of measuring it at minus three decibels here is at 35 hertz. So that sounds about right. Yeah, their claims are pretty good. 79 hertz. So this is F6, where it goes down by six decibels, is 32 hertz, and then an F10 of 28 hertz. Okay, not bad for a budget sub. Next, I wanna show you guys the bad boy. So this is the SVS SB2000. This was sent to me by SVS, and this thing is a monster. You're gonna see how subs should measure. So let me read over some specs first. All right, so this is the SVS SB2000. 
I got the piano gloss, which is 100 bucks more. So it sells for $7.99. This thing is a monster. So this is a 12 inch sealed subwoofer. So there's no port on this one. So this is rated at 500 watts RMS with 1,100 watt peak and a frequency response from 19 hertz to 220 hertz plus or minus three decibels. It has the auto on and off standby function. This one does not have a high level input, but it does have a gain control, a crossover control, and a phase dial. All right, so let's see if that claim of 19 hertz is true. So here's the SVS SB2000. Boom, there it is, the green one. And take a look at that thing. Look at how flat it is. I want you to pay attention to that because this is gonna make it very easy for you to cross this over with your other speakers because it is, it's, it's very flat. So yeah, it just makes it a lot easier to cross over and it blends with your system. Your main speakers shouldn't have a bunch of peaks and valleys, it should also measure flat. You have some good speakers and they do measure flat. You want the sub to cross over and also continue being flat. You don't wanna have a, a huge mountain here. So this is at an 85 decibel reference level. And so at 85 decibels, this is measuring at 32.8, which is about the same as like, you know, some of these. Oh, well, not that one. No, never mind. It's not. So uh, 32.8 hertz. And then if you go down to, look what happens. So when I go down to minus three decibels, so at 82 decibels, this is measuring at 19.86. So spot on 19 hertz. Now look what happens when you go down to minus six decibels. This is crazy. So it's 79 decibels. We're at sub 20 hertz frequencies. Like you can hear this, you can just feel it, but you can't feel, you can't hear it. So 15 hertz. And then at a minus 10 dB, we are at 75, all right? And we are at 11 hertz. That is just crazy. Just, it's, it's, this is an amazing sub. There's nothing else to say about it, but yeah, this is a beautiful sub. All right, so next up is a subwoofer that I made and I call it the nice cube, like ice cube. And so this is a, a sub that I built using a Dayton reference eight inch woofer. In total, the parts probably cost me maybe somewhere around $300, but it did take a long time for me to build. I'll show you a few pictures here. I have some internal bracing. I painted it gloss white because there aren't very many gloss white subwoofers. So I had to make one. Um, I didn't want it to take up too much space. So I had to go with an eight inch woofer because if I wanted to go with a larger woofer, the box would have to get larger as well. Somehow, SVS was able to fit a 12 inch driver into an enclosure that's the same size as the one that I built. So kind of feel stupid about that, but they're at SVS and I'm just, I'm just a guy who makes speakers once in a while. So I believe the one that I was using was this Dayton Audio RSS 210 HF-4. So this is the eight inch beefy subwoofer. Very beefy, as you can see here, and a nice looking, nice looking material. And this is made out of aluminum. The subwoofer itself is rated at 280 watts RMS with a max of 560 watts. And the frequency response is from 27 hertz to 1000 hertz. And that would be on a ported enclosure. I chose to put it in a sealed to keep the box smaller. And so I had to use some trickery in order for it to hit a little bit lower. So the plate amp that I used for this was a Young SD300-6, and this is a 300 watt RMS Class D plate amplifier, and it has a six decibel boost at 30 Hertz, and that's what I needed for this to extend a little further, because in a sealed enclosure, it probably would have fallen off pretty heavily below 40 Hertz, but because it has that boost at 30 Hertz, you can see that it extends a little further. We'll see in the test right now has auto on off. It has your gain control, your crossover control, and your phase control dial. Also, I'll leave a link to my build here. And as you can tell, I kind of made a mistake and I, I routed out a little bit too large of a, a circle. So I ended up just putting some fluorescent glow in the dark kind of stuff so that it does glow in the dark. I never really get to see it, but I thought it was cool and it was a way for me to kind of fix my mistake. I also should mention that I'm pretty proud because I won a build of the month on Reddit on the DIY sound forum. So yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. So here it is, the nice cube. How does it measure? There it is in blue. So let me kind of just show the one that I built compared to let's say the MS-10 and it's in blue here. And as you can tell, it's also flat, right? So this makes it easier to cross over. Now keep in mind, this is an eight inch sub. So you wouldn't expect it to go very deep, 
But let's see. So compared to the SVS, obviously it doesn't extend out as far, but not bad. So you can see here that 30 hertz bump from the plate amp and 85 hertz. We are at, let me keep the SVS up just for reference. So at 85 hertz, it's actually up and we're at 28 hertz. Now, if we go down to F3, 82 hertz, we're at 25 hertz. That's not bad for an eight inch. Now, the other thing is that this sub won't play as loud as the SVS, no way. It's gonna reach its excursion limits a lot sooner than the SVS will. Now, let's take a look at an F6 of, what is that, around 22 hertz, not bad, 23 hertz, and an F10 of about 20 hertz. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of that sub, it sounds good. So yeah, that sub cost me maybe about 300 some dollars in materials, but it did take me a long time to build. So it's fun and I have a lot of pride that I actually built that. So next up is the ELAC Debut 2.0 Sub 3010. And so this is a 400 watt powered subwoofer. It's using a bash amp and it's very different from the others. As you can tell, there's no practically no dials on the back. So this is using a 10 inch woofer and instead of a port or being sealed, this is actually using a passive radiator. And the thing that's different about this is it's all controlled via an app on your phone. The other thing that this can do that the others can't is it can automatically EQ. So bass is very, very tricky. So depending on where you put the sub is gonna determine how it sounds. And so if you place it in the corner, it's gonna be a lot bassier than if you put it in the center of the room. And so the auto EQ will measure at the sub itself and then you put it at your listening position and what it'll do is it'll calibrate so it'll try to match the frequency response of the sub to the frequency response that you're receiving at your listening position. Okay, so specs on this say 200 watts RMS on their website, 400 watts peak, and they claim a frequency response of 28 hertz to 150 hertz. Let's see how it measures. All right, so I'll keep my nice cube up and let's see how the ELAC performs. Boom, so there's the ELAC in purple and make this one go away. So not as flat as the SVS or the nice cube. At 85 decibels, it is at 30 Hertz and the standard measurement of minus three decibels. We are at 27.89, so 28 Hertz. They are claiming 28 Hertz. Yeah, it all checks out. At minus six decibels, we are at, at minus six, we are 25 Hertz. And at minus 10 decibels, we are at 22 Hertz. So keep in mind that minus three decibels is the most important one because that's really when it starts to roll off. Now minus six is also important because you do want extra extension. You will hear that. Minus 10 is almost to the point where you, you really aren't gonna hear very much. And the last one is a subwoofer, a very small subwoofer ported and it's designed by somebody named Paul Carmody. Carmody? I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. But yeah, this guy designed the Overnight Sensations and he's he's awesome. So he designed this mini sub using a Tang Band W5. I'll leave a link in the description to all these. So this one is from Parts Express. The driver itself sells for 42 bucks. And so I just had to build this thing. Look at this. Look at this five and a quarter inch woofer. This is, is that nuts or what? Five and a quarter inch, okay. I actually thought it was six and a half, but looking back, it's five and a quarter. This is, it's nuts. The excursion on this is crazy. Look at the surround on this thing. Just to give you some perspective, this thing is about the size of a shoebox. And according to his specs, this can go down to an F3 of 35 Hertz. Let's see how mine performs. Okay, so there's the ELAC. You know, just for fun, I'm gonna bring up the Angstrom Forza and I'll bring up the Voxel. So here's this small five and a quarter inch Subwoofer, size of a shoebox. Boom, a lot flatter. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that it does not have a crossover. This is just a passive subwoofer. So you have to connect it to an app and hopefully you have a way of, you know, doing a low pass. Now, another thing I wanna make note of is that 123 Toyd and I are actually collaborating on a project where we're incorporating the same driver in a similar enclosure to the Voxel. So the specs that you see here are kind of what you might expect from the speaker that we're building. All right, so here's the Voxel, uh, relatively flat here. At 85 dB, we are at 39 Hertz. At minus three decibels, we are at 35 Hertz. He claims 35 Hertz, boom, spot on. Good job, 
let's see how it extends down here to uh, uh, minus six decibels. We would be at 79 decibels and that is down to 31.7 Hertz. And if we do an F10, we see that we are at 28 Hertz. So not bad for a small five and a quarter inch woofer. So we have to come to a conclusion and figure out who these are for. So for the angstrom, well, it was very peaky, wasn't very flat, seemed like a, a sub that would be hard to blend. And for the size, it didn't go very deep either. So I would have to say, if you're looking for a piece of furniture, it does a pretty good job as an end table. So the Mica MS-12, I think is good if you're on a budget and you want some low end response, don't expect it to go super low because it just won't. Now, I also think that the MS-10, which has very similar specs, is actually a better deal because it's less expensive and it's a smaller sub. And so I think if I had to choose between the two, I would choose the MS-10. Both of those subs are gonna be good if you're using them in a small to mid-sized room, more on the smaller side, and if you're using them at a desk. The SVS, the PB2000 that I have, that thing is just gonna be good if you have a mid-sized room, you're using it for, a, you know, bassy music, or if you're using it for home theater, it's just a beast. I mean, it does everything. There's, it sounds musical, and by musical, I mean that it is a flat response, meaning that it'll sound good with music because it won't have any weird peaks where it's not supposed to have any peaks. So that's what I mean by musical. It also can be a monster if you want it to do that too. Now, if you want to DIY a speaker like I did with the Nice Cube, if you want to get your hands dirty, it's really, it gives you a sense of pride that you actually built this subwoofer. If you're into just doing something for fun, try building a sub of your own. Parts Express has a bunch of stuff on their website. They have some easier kits that are already pre-cut if you don't have a bunch of tools, but maybe that's the route you might wanna go. So the ELAC Sub 3010, those are good if you don't have a receiver or something with room correction. Even if you don't have room correction, the sub itself has a way to equalize itself. So that comes in handy if you wanna place a sub in a place that's not optimal, it'll kinda of help correct for itself. The ELAX didn't go as low as some of the other subs like the SVS, but it's still a pretty good deal considering what it can do and the feature set. And last is the Voxel sub, and it's a pretty tiny sub, so you can't expect to use it for home theater, but I think it's good, especially on a desk. It's awesome if you place it next to just some two small speakers. I would pair it with something like the Dayton DTA 2.1 BT. They have a new version that has a crossover control, perfect for use with the Voxel. I should mention that there are other brands. I have a list here. Rhythmic comes to mind, the Monoprice Monolith, Shoe HSU, uh, PSA, JL Audio, some of my favorite speakers from my car, Rel, and the Dayton Ultimax is kind of a more extreme version if you wanna build something a little bit bigger. So hopefully that gave you an idea of the different types of subs and what might be right for you. So as always, I have to put these subs on a leaderboard. I don't currently have a column for subwoofers, but I'll make one right now. So I'll also list to all of these products on my kit. So link will be in the description. All right, I hope you found that useful. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And if you wanna hear my podcast and other exclusive stuff, they're at patreon.com forward slash Joe Intel. Anyway, that's it for now. Take care, bye-bye.